If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding-edge tools and tactics to micro-fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? All right, CEO Mischief Makers, welcome to the conversation. I get to share an incredible conversation. I know it's going to be wonderful uh, because uh, this person I'm going to introduce you to has been highly recommended and I got to meet him uh, recently. Uh, highly recommended by people I absolutely trust and value in my life. So welcome to the conversation, Vinny Fitcher. How you doing? Uh, thanks, Mary. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Mm, all right. You know, it's, a, it's a gloomy day in Cleveland. Actually, the sun just popped out while we were talking. So it's a little bit better than it normally is. It's been acting normal. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, same here. It's, a, it's absolutely, we just got a break in the heat. Uh, massive heat. Um, and I think the fires just got a break. So yeah, yeah life is good. We get to chat yeah. on a, on a pretty cool day, huh? Yeah. I love it. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. We start this conversation with mindset and, um, I know that you will have a lot to say on this topic. I'm sure. Um, can you, can you share a mindset shift whether it was very early in your career or recently, but a mindset shift that ab actually allowed you to, to leap forward in your life or business. Yeah, it's something I talk about regularly in many circles and this is idea of the shadow I cast on the business or even in my life. And what am I doing to continually help organizationally grow beyond the shadow that I cast? And so lots of times my thought process on what I think about our business is such a big shadow that I have to always continually help make sure what blocks exist organizationally, whether it's in my family, it's in our living room, whether it's on my executive team, how to grow beyond that shadow. That's an amazing way to look at it. How did you come out with, how did you come up with that idea of the shadow you cast, because you're looking at yourself in that leadership role and the goals that you have for whichever, whichever institution, let's put it that way, you're thinking about whether it's your business or your family or your friend group or whatever, or mastermind or something like that. How did you come up with that idea of the, the shadow you're casting? Take me deeper into that. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of our good things we do in life start with some pretty tough lessons we get. And so, I, uh, I owned a mid eight figure web hosting company at the time. We we're the darling of the internet, got 500 people on my team and I got all kinds of awards we're winning and we're beating GoDaddy in some categories and we're like really gaining momentum. And I met with the board and we had made some decisions that maybe I'd step away as the CEO and take the chairman's role, get a professional CEO in. And I, I did do all that, listened, even though I didn't want to actually, Mary, to be real with you. I, I did it because I thought maybe it was the right move. Well, I didn't, I wasn't, I was so arrogant and or lacked some perspective of my blind spots. I didn't realize how many levers I was pulling this shadow that we're talking about. So when I stepped away, our business was in a lot of trouble very quickly because of the role I played as the CEO. And I, I, I started to pay attention like, wow, I didn't respect like what we were replacing. Well, fast forward in the story, we, you know, we went from this almost $50 million company to nosediving it and selling it for parts after I took it back. And I realized I had a significant aspect in growing the thing. And when I handed it off, I handed it off without any appreciation or respect for that shadow. So what I hear you saying, first off, that's an, that's an incredible uh, way to pack that kind of lesson into a very short story. So thank you for that. But, but what yeah. I hear you saying is 
you, you, that there were a couple of mindset lessons in there. Um, and that, and I interpret that shadow as, um, and you use the word arrogance, right? So I, I interpret it that way. I, I interpret it like I'm bigger than this role and I'm putting this, um, you know, I'm, I'm handing this over, but all these pieces that I still touch are, you're not going to be able to handle whoever's taking this role. Is that kind of how it ended up? In that particular instance, yes. So the shadow doesn't always have to be very negative. The shadow mm -hmm. can be quite positive because some yeah. of the energy as a founder that I bring to the organization, like I'm going to do it because I'm the one putting life to the vision. And so lots of times you're moving and pulling levers that others might not even be thinking about. So my arrogance was not recognizing that. My arrogance was uh, believing that the organization that I had invested well enough in other leadership on the team to overcome some of those things. So take me deeper into that with another scenario, let's say, um, a little more positive scenario or a scenario that you then took that, that lesson and yeah. applied it to the next, the next gig or the next thing that Here's you did. Here's the good news, Mary. I eat my own dog food. So that <laughs> message matters now a lot. We've been extremely successful. We had another than eight figure business that we subsequently sold, uh, which was in the health space. And now I'm in the middle of another venture where we're doing the same thing. And so I discovered through all of that process that I'm really good. Uh, I'm the type of leader that builds leaders. And so one of the things I have to do is regularly check what part of the organization I need to step away with and help fill in the leadership piece that's necessary for the company. So I have historically always been one of our best copywriters, one of our best marketers, drive leads. A couple of years back in this organization here at Fully Accountable, I realized that the marketing team is going to best take a next step with me stepping out of the department. And so I, I, I'm regularly evaluating six areas of the company and where am I involved in it in such that me removing or even another principal taking a step back to develop the next rung of leadership. And so I did, stepped away. And what we found out in the marketing department, there were parts of process and marketing by math and where I did it by feel, they did it by generating some good performance numbers. It was what our department needed. And had I stayed in that role, we probably wouldn't have improved in those areas. Well, fast forward, we're still the department, we, because I can't not be part of the amazing department, only in cheerleading, not responsibility. It's still the number one driver of leads in the company. Wow. So take me from that first scenario where you had to sell the, the company for parts and, and all the, the lessons that you learned. You, you mentioned another scenario where you did, you were able to sell the company and now fully accountable. So how has that, that idea of the shadow you cast evolved so that in fully accountable, you are, you are using it to the fullest to create the, the most success possible besides the marketing department scenario. How, how are you take casting that shadow in a way that, uh, that you know is going to bring even greater success for the company? You know, I, I'm, I'm in charge of vision, right? My, part of my personality is that I'm always thinking about tomorrow such that I lose the joy sometimes of today, like being content with what today brings me. So whenever we hit a number, I'm like, man, why aren't we this? So I'm always struggling with being tomorrow's version of ourselves. Well, one of the benefits of that is I'm thinking about our competitive advantage and what moat we have around that and what's our value proposition. So one of the things, I'm a zero to one, I'm a very quick start. I can grab something and run very quickly with it, but I don't want to continue to do the same thing. So what I've gotten, I think, pretty good at is building teams, looking at people who actually want to take an organization and be a good steward of what they have and be better at it. And, and, and then hand it off to someone else uh, with time. So I wouldn't now start an organization without three critical components. Someone who really is good at strategy and vision, a manager, someone who wants to build out management structure to it, and actually the technician who is the worker at it. And so when I launched Fully Accountable, me as the visionary, I quickly had what was a project manager who's now our COO and my first technician, which was our first CFO. We were the three pieces. And that would have been learned over me not wanting to pull levers that I shouldn't be pulling eventually down the road for the company. And how long? So that's part, I agree 100%. I, I, 
interviewed lots of people, talked to lots of entrepreneurs, very, very successful entrepreneurs. And I think the the personality type is very similar, just like you just yeah. explained, right? It's that futurist. It's that person who's leading the vision and just pushing and pushing and, and, and has that idea. And just, I, I take it like it, it grabs me by the throat and won't let go. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's kind of how it feels. And, right. and so in order to, so many people listening are at many different stages yep. of that process, solopreneurs. And I think when you were talking about pulling all those levers, especially those of us, I, I used to call myself a superhero solo entrepreneur. Yeah. I was, I, man, I was a superhero. I was proud of being all on my own and doing it on my own. And, yeah. uh, how naive I was, <laughs> but then you graduate to being able to surround yourself with people who can pull the other levels, levers, excuse me, better than you could. And you know what? Join you in casting that shadow way beyond what you can just do yourself. Yep. So was, what's the basis of the question? Like how, when did that like kick in or? Yeah. And how can, how can someone in, in say a superhero solo entrepreneur yep. role, prepare themselves for that next shadow. Okay. So here you go. It's my one, it's, this is the Kung Fu Panda advice for this moment right now is somebody who is so used to, you know, solopreneurs really, let's be honest, you're selling your time, but you're going to be the most profitable ever, but you've really given yourself a high paying job. You don't really have a organization or a company and you're probably never going to have one. If you don't get comfortable with one concept, whoever else you want, to take risk to join the team, you have to be okay with them doing 70% as good as you're capable of doing. In other words, you're going to muzzle the ox. If you can't be okay and celebrate 70% of what you can do, you're going to have an impossible time. You're always going to be the lightning bolt to the tree. And I had to get comfortable with helping other people do it at least 70% as good as I could do it. That is a perfect way to put it. I love that because when you get comfortable with that, if and when they go beyond that 70%, you're really excited, yeah, right? Now house money, house money. It's yeah, yeah, but they will never get past that if you can't celebrate recognizing and them not feeling deficient and then turning into your micromanaged person waiting for you to tell them what to do. It just feeds itself. So they're always yeah. feeling disappointed because you're making them feel disappointed. And so I had to get right with that. As a matter of fact, that subject was really the context of my first best-selling book called The CEO's Mindset. I had to get right with that. And by the way, all of your guests can have our materials. You know, we created a gift page and you can talk to them about that. But that was a big principle that was huge for me. It is a complete mindset. It, it, it's tied up in ego. It's tied up in, in our insecurities. It's tied up in all that stuff. And I think that's exactly why I start with this topic. When I talk to yeah. successful people like you, we have to start there. We have to, we have to tackle that first before any of the tactical stuff, the strategic stuff will make any difference because you will get in your own way if you okay. don't tackle this mindset. Wow. All right. So not only did we stay at 30,000 feet, but we came down into a mindset, basically into the weeds to get some specific guidance on how you can overcome that Kung Fu Panda guidance, guys. Are you kidding? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was perfect. Uh, now anyone who uh, wants to dive even deeper better join us on Wednesday. So any last words on mindset, or I'm just going to send you, send everybody over to that, uh, that uh, page and uh, check out your book. No, I think, you know, the funny thing is that we get so anxious about tomorrow. There's enough to worry about today. And that I think, uh, you know, we're so close to always uh, getting the, the next thing or the whatever burden. And I just like, like to encourage people, take captive your thoughts and make sure they're being obedient to truth because, you can get caught up in a lot of the lies you tell yourself. And so I always tell someone, be careful about how you're thinking or talking about yourself. It can be some of the most toxic things you do. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.